right, team, I got a great episode for you today on the Becoming a Champion show. I sat down with Olympic gold medalist from the U.S. of A., Mr. Scott Hamilton. Many of you know him. He had some truly electrifying routines. He was filled with passion, filled with freedom, and he was truly amazing to watch. And today I got a chance to sit down with this American hero and inspiration, and I know you're going to love it. We had a great conversation. He was inspiring, and his passion is still off the charts. So we can learn a lot from Mr. Scott Hamilton. Sit back and enjoy today's episode. And if you do, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and give us some comments in the comments. Sit back and enjoy this episode with Scott Hamilton. Um, I will tell you, my wife and I this morning, as recently as this morning, we were watching one of your old Walk This Way. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> So yeah, I, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it was. I just walked you... this way as much as Aerosmith did it. I think you know? <laughs> I, mean, I, I wore that thing out. It was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah. You know, you had a lot of fun doing it, and that's that's one thing that I that I loved about your skating style is that there was a lot of passion, there was a lot of excitement. Um, you know that you would always show, and and I I just I loved it. So I'm a I'm a I'm a fan, but I'm also oh, thank um, you. very appreciative of of you coming on today. So. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. I, I want to ask you, was, was ice skating always your sport or, or were you an athlete in other sports as well? No, no. I was uh, super sick when I was a little kid Yeah, and I was in and out of hospitals for like four years. And then basically to give my parents a morning off to recharge their batteries and to kind of decompress from all the stress that they endured over those four years um, of trying to get a diagnosis for me mm. that never happened. You know, we were mm. sent home with the instructions of just go home and live a normal life and see what happens. That was the best the medical community could do back then. And so we went home and, and our family physician who uh, lived, you know, three doors down from us just basically said, you know, Ernie, Dorothy, you need a morning off. Mm. And they're like, how are we going to do that? Because, you know, they're still in that four year hospital mode. Yeah. And I uh, said, you know, just take one morning each week, sleep in and, and just, you know, really just recharge your batteries and just be. And they said, how are we going to do that? Right. He said, well, there's a brand new facility at the university where they open it up to the, the kids of the city to go in and learn how to skate from eight to noon every Saturday morning. And so that's kind of how it all started. But, you know, we, we, we neighborhood sports, you know, we would play kickball and we'd play football in somebody's front yard or we would play basketball in somebody's driveway, you know, and, you know, there was nothing, you know, organized or anything. I always loved watching baseball because my grandfather was a huge Red Sox fan. Okay. And he, when I was brought home from, because I was adopted, when I was brought home, um, he, when they put me to sleep, you know, in, in my crib for the first time, he put a, a Red Sox cap and a baseball glove in my crib with me thinking, that that would just, you know, I would emanate. Yeah. Um, just putting you know, it out there. Just, you know, skating was one of those things where, you know, I got on the ice with these 150 well kids and it was something I realized that I was on equal ground literally. Mm. Um, and then after a few more weeks, I realized I could skate as the best athletes in my grade. And mm. it was my first real taste of self-esteem. Yeah. And after that, it was kind of like, I, I don't want to really do anything else. I just want to, I want to do this. And mm. so I lived at the rink. My parents had to threaten me to get me off the ice. Um, I ended up getting teased for being a male figure skater. So I played hockey and figure skated at the same time, just to kind of earn respect and to stop all the teasing. And, um, and then, you know, after my second neck brace, I realized that hockey probably wasn't in my best interest. <laughs> and and went all in on figure skating. So, um, you know, it just was, you know, my personality type, you know, I love being the center of attention. Mm. Um, you know, I just, I always was putting on shows for my family and, you know, trying to make them laugh and doing impressions and all those things when I was really, really little. And so skating became kind of an outlet where, yeah. you know, I, um, I saw this guy named Freddie Trankler performing the ice capades as an ice show comedian. I thought, that's what I want to do someday. I want to be an ice show comedian. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that, do you but, think you that know, led, did that lead to your style? I mean, you had a unique style. Did, was it there that? Was a or? Lot. There was a lot. I mean, I, um, I love Freddie Trankler. I love Kevin Buff was another ice show comedian that grew up in my area of Northwestern Ohio. And then, um, 
And then, you know, I just, those were my idols, you know, I just loved. And then I went away uh, six months a year to train in Illinois. Hmm. And I met um, a, the year that I went up there, um, there was a young man up there named Gordon McKellen Jr. And uh, Gordy was going to win his first national championship as the senior men's, the, like the men's national champion. And hmm. I got to skate with him every day. And and I could, he, you know, he, his parents were both show skaters, you know, his dad was an ice show comedian, you know, yeah. basically an acrobat. So I'm, I'm watching him and he had all the charisma. He had all of the showmanship. He had, you know, this, this kind of really cool brazen confidence on the ice that was just really like, it's like, that's, I want to be like that. You know, mm. I want to be like that guy that has an audience in the palm of their hand. And how do you do that? And what I realized was that Gordy was so organic, right, mm. to him, his personality, to his um, background, to his experience level. And um, he just put all of that into his skating. And it's like, well, then I'm going to do that, too. So Gordy basically gave me permission mm. to, you know, kind of follow the same path he did and just say, like, I'm a silly guy. I want to make people laugh, you know? So I, but I, you know, I, I'm also a competitive skater, which puts me into a different situation. And so I can kind of leverage all those things and just try to create my own identity in this space. And that's kind of the essence of figure skating. If, if you're really good at what you do, and if you really bring your host whole self to the ice, then you're different than every other skater on the ice. And in that way, it's kind of like, you you stand out yeah. and um and it was kind of like those years that I skated with Gordy that I I really realized that I could take the best of Freddie Trankler and the best of you know kind of championship skating and kind of marry them in order to do something really fun and unique. How long did it take for that that free spirit to come out of you? You know because you know it sounds like your journey was pretty you know you figured out pretty quickly. Hey. I'm good at this. I'm better than other people, but that doesn't necessarily mean as a young, as a young boy, the best of you is going to come out. No, so at what point no. did you, did it, you it really feel time. like, yeah, it takes time. And you know, when you're, when you're in a performance sport or in, even if you're just performing, there's that whole, uh, you got to start, you know, chipping away at stuff. Like I, I was telling a girl the other day, she was skating in her rink and, and, you know, I, she just said, I just got, you know, I just got to learn all these things. And I just, and I go, okay, here's the deal. What does a diamond look like when you pull it out of the ground? Mm. Like a dirty rock, right? Yep. So the idea is, you know, you could have like a, like a 50 carat diamond you're holding it in your hand, but it's just dirty and it's sort of not of a shape and everything else. And the idea is that you start chipping away at stuff, mm. right? You start chipping and polishing, chipping and polishing, chipping and polishing. And pretty soon, you know, you have like it, you sparkle, right? You have this uh, this unbelievable value that comes from we're all diamonds. We're all diamonds, right? Mm -hmm. We're all we have within us this incredible capacity to do really cool things. But how do we leverage kind of our uniqueness and and who we are? What well, it takes time. And you got to get over like um, confidence barriers, inhibitions. Uh, you know, it's like when I skated, nobody put their arm over their head. No one did that because that was too feminine, right? We yeah. don't want to. Yeah. And G Gordy was like, bam, you know, it was like, okay, now we can do that. It's like, yep. you know, you you wore these outfits that were almost very formal and Gordy came out and he, in these kind of outfits that you'd see in the ice capades. And it was like, we can do that too. That's so cool. We can do it. And, and all this, the permission that you get and the freedom that you get from that but it takes time. Hmm. You know, it takes, you know, how many falls does it take to get a double axle? How many falls does it take to get a triple sow cow? How many falls and surgery does it take to get a triple lutz job? How many, you know, and it and it's just all of that working through failure, working through those confidence building, hmm. um, you know, I, 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 moments where, you know, you have these uh, breakthroughs, epiphanies, these mind kind of blowing um, events that just say, Oh, that, okay. Mm. Got it. And you know, it, and it just, it's time, you know, just show up one day and say, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> yeah. It work out no, that way. no way. No you way. You just got to build the muscle, the, the, the discipline that it takes to, to grow and to build and to, to be. And yeah. I think all sports are like that in their own way, but skating is unique because it is such a unique performance sport. You're extremely visible. You're alone on the ice. It's just you and you get to bring the best version of yourself to the competitive surface. And, you know, when you're watching an Olympics or a world championship, your favorite skate of the night could have come in eighth place just because mm -hmm. it appealed to you. And that's kind of the great thing about skating is, you know, you want to win, you want to collect the most points, you want to get the judges to, you know, just bring it up for you. But it takes time to develop those relationships to figure out what it's going to take to get their votes. And, and then on the professional side, it just takes time to figure out who you are as a performer. And then in that, you know, really just keep expanding your arsenal and your ability to communicate with an audience. Yeah. So for, for somebody like you, again, when, again, when, when we would watch you skate, it's like, this guy's totally uninhibited. And it actually looks like you were building momentum and building confidence as you were moving through the routine. You know, for somebody that that struggles, you know, with full expression, like how do you get to that point? Is it just like what you're saying? Keep showing up, keep doing your best, keep trying, keep peeling back. But but like, how can somebody that maybe isn't a skater, like what advice would you have for them to do that, to just get out of their own way, really? <laughs> you know, it's like how many steps are there in a marathon? Mm. You know? It's like yeah. 50, eight, 5,000 or something like crazy like that. But it, it, it's that it's like each, you know, you've got to get, it's a progression, a skill progression. Mm -hmm. It's um, you know, it's a maturity progression. Everything takes time. You know, it's, it's one of the best things I heard in business was I was talking to this gentleman who was uh, managing me for a while. And I said, you know, I've really, I've got all these performances. Is there any way like with the popularity of video and, and, and DVD that we could package all these performances and I could just sort of like put it out there. Hmm. And he goes, Oh man, I'm your guy. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah, I've made every mistake you can make packaging video. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, but that's it. Right. You know, it's like, you're going to make mistakes. It's like, you know, how do you, how does someone learn how to do brain surgery? You know, and you, you hate that there's mistakes, but they have to do it in incremental steps. They don't just go, Oh, by the way, you're going in and they're going to do that. It's like, no, you've got to learn over time and you've got to see you know, like, Oh, I would have done it that way. Good thing. I'm not the guy doing it. I'm just observing, but all these things come in these incremental steps that just take, you know, um, not just the physical nature of it, but the, intellectual the emotional and the spiritual level of all mm -hmm. of it to be able to create something that um is self-sustaining you know and 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 that's it's more than just this leads to that that leads to that it's it's almost like you you got to keep navigating the forks of the road you know yeah. it's it's like do i go this way or that way or do i go up or down do i go you know and and it's it's navigating all those little choices that become kind of a bigger identity. Yeah. And it's in, I always try to tell people that the fork in the road isn't a left or right. It's an up or down. Mm. You know, you can take the easy road. That's it. You get all kinds of momentum and speed and you just, and then you're looking up at the guy that took the tough road. Yeah. And you know, he's the one that's ah, just turning it out every day and getting stronger and just, you know, putting himself through more. And, you know, it's those guys that usually end up, you know, standing on the top of the, the victory stand. Yeah. And, you know, with that for, for you too, like you said, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. I'm by myself. I'm on the ice. How did you stay out of your own head? Because you could very easily <laughs> say, Hey, uh, all these people are watching on TV. The world is watching. Uh, you know, how do you stay out of that? Or was that something, uh, listen, you have talent. So is that something that just came natural to you where you didn't even think about that? The, there's three um, levels that, you know, in, in my day went to the nationals, right? Mm. The, the first level you, you qualify to go to the nationals is the novice level, okay. right? So you start in juvenile, then you test, you get up to intermediate, then you test and you get up to novice. So you, there's nine regions 
there's three regions in you know, each section, right? So you, you, it's like you qualify all the way up. So I win my regionals, I go to sectionals. Now I gotta be top three in sectionals on, in the novice level my first year to make it to nationals. I'm third in the figures and I'm third in the freestyle. Well, you'd figure that's third place, right? I'm going to the nationals. I came in fourth. Wow. <laughs> it just happened where one of the guys that was fifth was you know, second in the free skating and bumped me down. <clears throat> so what happened was I had to kind of I go, okay, I didn't make it to nationals that year. That's kind of disappointing. So then the next year, we, we up the game. I go to Illinois to train. That's where I met Gordy. That's where I met Janet Lynn. That's where I met all these incredible. And I got to watch them and you know, how they skated. And I made it to the nationals that year hmm. and they scheduled the novice boys event as the event right before the senior ladies championship, the marquee hmm. event at the national championships where Janet Lynn, the most popular woman athlete in the world at that time hmm. was competing in her very last U S national championship. Wow. There were 17,500 people in the audience. And I, never saw that many people in my life ever like combined. I grew up in a town of 15,000 at the time I skated in a town of 2000 yeah. and now I'm in front of 17,500 people. And I fell five times in my three minute program. Wow. Like how do you, how do you have time to fall five times in a three minute program? Yeah. I was so scared. I couldn't feel my feet, my legs. I couldn't breathe. And I just choked. Mm. And it's funny that when something like that happens on such a big, scale it can either crush you or ignite this i'm i'm never going to let that happen again hmm. and so what happened was i go back to nationals the next year and i only fell twice and i came in ninth again but it was like <clears throat> still a little bit of an improvement you know yeah. i was still at the bottom but i was still at nationals and and i, I only fell twice instead of five times five times so then i go up to the junior level and i beat two guys the next year and so, you know, it's that, you know, so it's, you learn kind of how to step on that stage. You learn from failure. You mm. learn from humiliation. You learn from incredible pain and suffering that, okay, if that's the worst thing that can happen and I'm still here, yeah, let's give it another go. Yeah. <laughs> hey. what's the, I've already experienced what's the worst thing that can happen. So you just, sort of and then you kind of it it sort of morphs into this thing of you know um like i always tell my kids what's the greatest strength and they always roll their eyes and they go here he goes again he goes lack of weakness <laughs> right the greatest strength is a lack of weakness so you you figure out where you're weak and you get stronger and you you're humble and hungry in your pursuit and in that i had to figure out well i really wasn't doing this very well because i hated figures and because I hated figures, they hated me back. Yeah. Huh. yeah okay, we got to work that out. I got to, you know, work on my relationship with compulsory figures and yeah. ended up falling in love with them. And it was the only reason I won the Olympics in 1984. Then you get into the whole idea of the athletic side of the sport. How am I doing that to the, the best of my ability? And you find out just by failure that I'm not working as hard as I can. There's another gear that I need to put it into that's going to get me there. Right. And it's dealing with, you know, success, which is as almost as toxic as failure in, in many respects. Like the first time I won the U S nationals and the world's on the senior level, I mean, I'm the world champion, the world champion. And I didn't want to get back on the ice because I figured that either, um, I got to get so much better that I, I don't know how much better I can get. It's mm. that freaks me out. That level of commitment. I don't know if I can do, or the sport is at its lowest place in history if I'm its champion. And so you've just got to kind of work out what is, what does success look like? And mm. then when I went back the next season, I found that I, I'm one again and I'm, and I'm looking at the guys that are standing next to me on the podium, two different guys. Mm. And I'm going, I'm not competing against the world or the history of the sport. I'm competing against guys like me, just guys. Yeah. They put their skates on one at a time. They, they get up in the morning, they've got their own list of strengths and weaknesses, fears and confidences. And all I have to do is figure out a way 
to stay ahead of these guys. And I can, if I can do that for two more years, I'm the Olympic champion. It's like, okay, there's a carrot. <laughs> Let's yeah. just work towards that. I would say, how, how did you, but like, were, I mean, again, like sports science today is very different than it was back then, or, you know, I'm sure even coaching was different than, than it is now. Were there any techniques that you used in order to sort of harness your emotion? Were you a visualization guy, a self-talk guy, certain breathing patterns, breathing, breathing cadences, or were you just like, all right, I'm prepared. Let's just let it, let it rip. You know, it, it, there was different different times you know they're different yeah you know each each event create has its own set of distractions challenges pressures and all the other things so one thing i figured that it was really a fun way of doing it is when i broke through in 1980 at the olympics and for the next two years i skated i opened my program with um, music from the movie mutiny on the bounty so it had these big crescendos that goes dun 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 bump and on those bumps i would land a jump right now i would yep. choreograph all these jumps and it was meant to get the crowd behind the music and it built and built and built and, you know one after another and after another and it was this wow 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 factor and so um i'd be standing with my coach and i go okay i'm gonna I'm visualize my, my my program now okay and he'd be standing there looking at me and i go dun, 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 dun. splat get up quick get up dun, 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 dun. splat quick oh dude get up, get up, get up, get up. And he's like, what are you doing? And it's like, I'm, I'm visualizing the worst thing that can happen. And he's like, why would you do that? And I go, well, let's just say after I land my first jump, I'm already doing better than I hoped. So, yeah. You know, yeah. You're, like, you're a winner. Let's get the momentum going here. You know? So, you know, it's, it's, for me, that was just sort of a weird coping mechanism at certain times that it's like, what's the worst thing that can happen here? I can go back to novice men and mm. be that wonderful ninth place loser that I was back then. Or I can just step into the fact that I just have to let my body do what I've trained it to do. Yeah. And you know what, if it's not good enough, I'll just try something different next year. You know, it, it's about stepping into the acceptance that um, I, I prepared and I'm going to, I'm going to dance with the date that I brung. Mm. And if it's good enough, great. And if it's not good enough, I'm going to be a student of who's around me and I'm just going to get better. And, and it was really weird that from, with that attitude from October of 1980 to March of 1984, I never lost a competition. And I don't say that to brag. I'm just saying that I got lucky a bunch of times. And, and I just, I was strategic in the approach of, if I'm really good at this and if I do that and I never miss the short program hmm. ever, like that's no, you don't miss the short program ever. Then I'm never going to take myself out of a competition. Then I'm going to be in it to win it hmm. all the time. And, and, and it was really um, one of those things where, you know, kind of the Lord put that on my heart. The Lord protected me. I remember um, one nationals, there was a whole, in the corner about this big. Um, and it was this kid that I was competing against named Jimmy Santee. And whenever he put his toe in the ice for triple Lutz, a huge chunk would come out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Jimmy, that's my Lutz corner. Why don't you do your Lutz on the other side? Why are you warming it up to my corner? And he goes, cause I'm not, I don't want to jump there after I've already warmed it up there. Cause the holes <laughs> are just gigantic. All right. So, so I went in, I, I, and I, you can't make those big adjustments. It's almost like, when you train a program on a 185 by 85 surface of ice, you're almost tracing your push-offs for, and the, it's the same number of steps, same number of crossovers into a jump. So I set up the triple lutz and I went back and I reached and I tapped and I heard this, <gasps> like from the audience in the corner, right? And then I landed it and they all went crazy. And I went back and they were, they were saying, come here, come here, come here at the end of my program. And I went over and they're like, look, and I looked at this giant hole and then about an, uh, maybe an inch away from it was my takeoff for the, wow. for the last. So, you know, that's luck, right? Mm. I could have stepped into that thing and it would have been a big crash and game over. And, and I would never would have won that competition. I would have lost all my momentum, but you know, you just gotta, you've got to prepare, 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 prepare. Mm. And then when it's your time, you just got to trust that you've done everything you can 
to skate at a level that's good enough to represent your training. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that. It's like your preparation leads to your confidence, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But I mean, it's like, and again, you get your mistakes out, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, okay. When I first started doing run throughs this year, I'd get to the slow section. I just crash. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the idea is, to end your program with the same amount of speed and energy that you began your program. And it's five minutes back then mm -hmm. it was a five minute program. And I just, I really wanted to show the judges and everyone else that I'm strong. I am strong at the end of the program as I was at the beginning. Yeah. And in that it sends its own message that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in shape Yep. and I'm not sucking wind at the end. I'm not slow and my shoulders aren't up and I'm not like doing this at the end of the program. It's like game on, let's go all the way to the finish. And then I can pass out when I get off the ice after yeah. the marks are given. And it was just, you know, once I learned how to do that, you know, it was amazing. There was this Russian coach that was, she, she has more world Olympic champion, Russian champion, pair skaters. It, it, you can't even count them. Right. And she goes, you do run through every day. I go, yeah, every day, full run through competition level. And she goes, yeah, I, I tried that with my skaters, but they got so tired. Mm. <laughs> it's like, well, I did too. Yeah. And then after a while, you don't get that tired anymore because your body has built itself to be able to perform at that level. It knows when to recharge and relax, when to restore and when to push, when to breathe and when to, you know, kind of, you know, get through these sections where it's hard to breathe. And, and it's just the repetition of all of that that creates the consistency. Yeah. You know, that reminds me, you know, for years I trained Ichiro Suzuki and, and he would, he was a player that he would throw and he would hit yeah. all, all year long. And, and a lot of American players never understood it, but he said, Hey, I never feel like I'm not prepared. I always felt like I was getting better and better and it just kept him tight and it gave him the confidence that he needed to perform you know, the way he wanted to. And, you know, what, what you, what you said this a couple of times, Hey, what's the worst that could happen? And it seems like failure. Once you failed, you realized what failure was and you said, okay, that's failure. I felt it. I tasted it. Okay. Now let's move past it. And so yeah. many, the, the game of most people I, I find is to just avoid failure. And it's like, you're saying, no failure taught me. Why would I avoid no. something that made me a champion? What if, what if, all of us looked at failure in every aspect of our lives as purely one thing, information. Mm, love that. What if we just looked at failure as purely information? That didn't work. Let's try this, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Let's not do that again because that, that hurt. That was painful. And it can, it can be anything. It can be... In athletics, business, relationships, friendship, whatever that is, whatever your pain points are and wherever you mm. can fail at the highest level, it's like, what if that were just information? Mm. And you look, like, okay, I learned from that, right? It, and I, and that was something that I figured out. It was sort of an epiphany that I was like, oh, I did that, but I didn't know I did that, right? I, I did that in my skating, but I, I didn't realize that's what it was until much later on. So when you get to that point where, you, you step on the ice and it's not blind fear anymore. Mm. It's, it's more about, I know what my parameters are. And when, when I, before I, I learned how to do this, my, here's, here's my normal training. It could go maybe here on the better side and here on the worse side, right? You know, mm. things could fall apart really fast. But as, as I learned and as I grew and as I took those failures and I, I learned from them, my my window is like this. So here's day-to-day -day training. Could be that much worse or that much better, but it was never going to be outside that those parameters. Mm. That's when I realized it's like, okay, failure is information. It's like, okay, that's not a program I'm ready to pull off right now. So I, I'm going to either dismiss it or put it on a shelf okay. and figure out how to do it later. This, you know, this relationship or whatever, if I was dating a girl and she was like totally not anybody I should be dating, you know, and it, oh, it didn't work out. It's like, okay, that that's something 
okay, I, I have to learn from that. It wasn't like I'm scarred for life. It wasn't like I, I will never, ever put myself in that position again. It's like I learn and then I go, it's like when I lost my job with the ice capades after two years of never missing a show or a press call, I learned that there's going to be owners and producers and people that just don't want men in their productions. Right. It's not my, it, I mean, I did everything right. I, you know, so there's just not going to be jobs that are available to me. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, all right. But I, I want to be able to increase, you know, any sort of um, familiarity, popularity to where more of those barriers will start to come down. Mm -hmm. You know, what you said earlier about my skating, it was really funny. I would, I would watch, like, and I would, I would watch when I was growing up, skaters that would train poorly and they throw temper tantrums, they get off the ice. It's like, okay, I'm not gonna, I don't want to do that. So note to self. And then I, I'd look out of a curtain when I was a pro and I'd peek out and I'd see who was in the eye. Was there a big crowd here? And you know, what are they doing? And I'd see these men in the front row and they're like, <laughs> Wondering if any of their buddies are here and just date night. They're taking one for the team. Yep. They're going to the ice skating show. I hope there's pretty <laughs> girls here. You know, it's kind of that. Yeah. And I realized it, it's, it's like, if I can, if I can get that guy mm. out of his chair, if I can win that guy over, I, there are no barriers to yeah. keep me from skating for as long as I want to skate. You know, it's it now I've connected to a skating audience that really people haven't connected to yet. Mm. Right. And I can start opening and broadening the popularity of the sport in a small way. And what I realized, you know, all of that, like I try to do things that were broadly accessible. I knew the women would like pretty much anything I did, but I really wanted to make it fun for the men. Right. So it was athletic, it was backflips, it was all this stuff, but it was also kind of done in a, in a character and humor. Yeah. And like 20 years after I stopped touring, right? I'll be at an airport and some guy will come up and say, Are you a skater? And I go, Yeah. And they go, uh, I, I never watched skating. It wasn't my thing. I'm a football, baseball, basketball guy, but my wife loves you. Can I get my wife? And would you say hi to her? I go, Of course. So he goes, Stay right here. I'll be right back. So he goes and gets his wife and he <laughs> goes, Honey, look who's here. And she'll look at her husband and she'll go, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> it's like, win! It's like, <laughs> got win! him! Got him! <laughs> and it's that. It's like, you know, when when I see skaters saying, I'm, 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 a, I'm of this, I'm performing for, it's like, don't, don't necessarily choose your audience. Mm. Right? Choose to be available to a bigger audience, right? Try to make sure that you're, you don't choose your audience. Your audience chooses you. Yeah. Right. And in all of that, you know, you think of, you know, the broad appeal for you know, certain musicians where they appeal to the young and the old and, and men and women, and they just have that appeal. Right. Yep. And it, it turns into that thing where they didn't try to choose who listened to their music. They didn't try to choose like, I don't, I don't want that audience. I only want this audience. And we're kind of in that way now through social mm -hmm. media and yep. through all these different things. Yep, but it's it. like, what if somebody just goes, I just want to be this guy, Yeah. right? Come on, come on. And then that way you could be Ed Sheeran. In that way you could be, you know, there, there's, there's artists that are doing that now where they just put their music out and it's kind of like Bruno Mars. Everybody likes it, mm. <laughs> you know what it's yeah. like? That's the, that's it, right? And so, you know, if we get so myopic and we're just saying, I don't care about appealing to them or them. I only want to appeal to them. Mm. Now you really limited yourself because you become um, disposable. You become replaceable. You become nondescript, you know, sort of like this uh, Uber kind of stuck in a rut kind yeah. of athlete. And, you know, now... My son just came home from school and now, um, uh, you know, you're you, that, I mean, it's, it's just, you limit your opportunities. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I think though with that, I think that's what it, 
attracts people to you is like when 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 they watch you skate or I'm speaking for myself too when I watch you skate there's like a sense like wow I I want that freedom for myself like this guy is just totally oh, liberated he's out there and totally liberated and well why wouldn't I be like that so so I think you you <laughs> gave well you gave a lot of people permission to yeah. just almost like rip the, rip the shirt off and say all right here I am you know, and, and I'm out there and I'm theatrical and I'm athletic at the same time and I'm a competitor. So it's like theater, athletics, competition all together. Where else do you see that besides skating? So I, I think you being that ambassador and giving people permission is where I'll, there was a lot of power wow. with that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it just sort of, and that's why I give all glory to the Lord. You know, it's just like, mm. I'm not smart enough to think of that stuff. It just sort of gets planted in there and then it sort of manifests itself. And then at the end of the day, it's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you know, and when I, I would do things like I'm not choo- I'm not here to choose my audience, I want my audience to choose me. It's like, oh, that is that's really broad and that's really cool. So, you know, I was I was you know, in a space where there are a certain amount of professional jobs and Mm. the next Olympic champion comes out and it's Brian Boitano, who's just like explosive and athletic and incredibly, um, you know, he's just phenomenal. Right. And it's like, now where do I belong? And so I looked, I go, I belong fine because, you know, I, I, I'm unique and he's unique and we can all coexist in the same space. It doesn't have to be him or me. And, you know, I, he would always do these big, you know, spread eagles and people would like, oh, and these big jumps and all these things. And it was like, that was kind of like what he was doing. And, and I, re- I, I thought about it for a second. It's like, well, I can, I, I can do whatever I want, yeah. you know? And so I, I, you know, it's like, well, I would do, you know, an interview and they go, when are you going to skate to opera? Opera is really popular and it just lends itself to skating. And I'd say, well, you know, there's a lot of guys that do that really well. But if I do it, it's going to be a comedy because they just can't pull it off. And yeah. so I did an opera comedy and then they come back at me the next year. It's like, well, now you've done opera and interesting. OK, funny. When are you going to do um, something more classical? And I go next year, I'll do something <laughs> classical. What are you going to do? I go, I'm going to do um, ballet. Mm. And they're like ballet. And I go. Yeah, it's kind of like not my thing at all, but um, I'm going to do it and it's going to be hilarious. So I took the most repetitive piece of music in the history of ballet, um, Don Quixote, and I made it even more repetitive Mm. (laughs) in the edit. And I wore this powder blue legit outfit, right? And it and it started um, with this introduction. A friend of mine who's a stand up comedian did. It's like. Um, ladies and gentlemen, but you know, madames and messieurs, welcome to, you know, it's like the, um, whatever, uh, uh theater of, of, of Boise, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, Hey David. And, um, so it was this sort of like comedic thing and I was very serious and I'm in like this legit ballet outfit, powder blue tights with this, the front, you know, how they have the ballet front of, mm. you know, their front totally accentuated <laughs> right <laughs> and just the idea that i came out in this outfit people started laughing already and it, what i did was i did it totally like serious i never smiled and never broke i never broke character once and it was like i was in this you know just yeah. totally mocking whoever wanted to be like that guy right and i it i met my wife after one of those performances wow, <laughs> i always it, tell people it was the powder blue powder blue tights there it is piece yeah you you know at your wedding you're maybe you should have wore that to your wedding (laughs) you know it's like i always like to uh under promise and over deliver you know what i'm saying (laughs) that that outfit might have over promised yeah no i'd I'd say just leave it there (laughs) no that that's awesome well i have i have one question that i always ask everybody in the show i call it the becoming a champion show i always feel like we're working to become our champion self even though you're a champion you're always working to for what's next and to continue making an impact and, and delivering. What does the word champion mean to you, a champion? You know, I think it it to me it means rising above your your own limitations. 
Mm. You know, and, and, you know, I wrote a book called Finish First um, a few years ago, and it was all about the idea that finishing first doesn't mean that you have to be standing on the top of the podium. It doesn't mean that you're getting all these accolades and awards. Finishing first means that you become absolutely the best version of yourself you possibly could be. You've leveraged every ounce of your talent, your time, your commitment, all of it to be able to now stand in the space of being the best you've ever been mm. up to now. Yeah. And, and, and I always say it, it just, Oh, here's the best I can be met it. Oops. Oops. There's another gear there. Okay. Here's the best I can be. Oops. Yep. Okay. Here's the best I can be. Oops. And it just, each time you walk through a door, there's more doors. Yeah. You know, each time that you, you're able to conquer a fear or conquer um, a, 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 a you know, sort of a, a skill, or each time you're able to get strong in a capacity that you were weak before, anytime mm -hmm. that you're able to um, sort of overcome something that's holding you back, that's sort of a finish first moment. It's yeah. like, what's your finish first moment? So for me, becoming a champion, it's not so much something that is, you know, external recognition, um, accolades, um, medals, trophies, anything else. It's more about being the best version of yourself, which is sort of, um, it, it never ends. Yeah. You know, it's like, well now, yeah, I'm not a skater anymore, but how can I be the best husband I can be? How can I be the best father I can be? Okay. Yeah. How, how do I, what can I do in the community to serve the community in a really unique way? Well, it's like, I, I have a cancer foundation, yeah. And so I raise money for a unique form of treatment that is sort of the promise of tomorrow, which is sort of happening today. Mm. There's, it's all about igniting the body's own immune system to, to destroy the cancer. Our bodies created the cancer. Why can't our bodies recognize and destroy it? So right. we're, we're building immunotherapy programs and we're partnering with other like-minded organizations and we're funding, we're going after the biggest baddest, nastiest bullies that are out there that are mm. taking lives quickly yeah. you know, and there's, and, there's there, and hopelessly. Right. So yeah. that, and you know, I'm skating has given me so much. And so now I, I work with the national predators to help, you know, grow the ice sports in a Southern city, you know, yeah. and, cool. and if you've ever been to a predators game, it's a, it's a really cool NHL. Experience. I, I gotta get, I gotta so, get there. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do a party pretty much better than anybody else, right? It's like right. rocking. And, you know, it's it's like to be an extension of that where we're now able to build a learn to skate where if kids want to go into hockey, now they have the skills to be competitive. And what they want to figure skate, we've got a staff that can really get them, you know, advancing consistently. If they mm -hmm. want to be a recreational skater, great. Now you can go out for your birthday parties and on your Saturday night dates, yeah. and you can be proficient, you can be safe and you're not going to be carried off in a stretch or something like that. So it's all of those things. And then we have a competitive program now that's taking off. And in another rink, we have this amazing test track, um, synchronized skating, ice theater, show track. And it's really fun to see these the, the different areas of the city and the different facilities kind of creating their own identity. And it's it's really fun to kind of see we planted a seed and now we don't know if it's going to be an oak or a birch or a pine or an aspen we don't yeah. know what kind of tree it's going to be but we're going to keep you know nurturing it we're going to keep you know giving it the best we got so you know it's been really fun to be able to to do all that and then you know through any you know speaking um opportunities i have i really try to encourage people last year during covid we came up with liveyourdays.com mm. and and it's just an encouragement platform it's all mm. about you know, here are from bigger people, we did sort of a podcast and we did a 30 day challenge, which it's still up. You know, if people want to go on and do it, they can, you know, it's a 30 day challenge is each day you're going to get a little mission mm. where it builds those um, muscles of contentment and gratitude and joy Yeah. in order for you to kind of understand what you're capable of living in and through with mm. COVID. So you know, it's, you know, it just feels like a season of encouragement and I've had a lot of fun doing that yeah. as well. No, I, I love it, man. I, I love your, your positive mental attitude 
And I know you've been through a lot, um, you know, health wise, you know, as a competitor. So to, to see and, and feel your passion is, uh, is awesome. I mean, I'm sure every day you keep feeding it by the activities that you do and just your viewpoint of what you see in front of you. Well, and a lot of it too is, you know, I, I did a talk at the Professional Skaters Association conference years ago, and it just felt right yeah. on the day. I said, you know, you know, so much of us live with this clenched fist mentality, you know, that we have to control every aspect of our lives. We have to control and we have to, we have to, you know, we have to, you know, it, it, this is mine and my will. And I'm going to, you know, I go, eh. What I learned is if, if you live with kind of an open hand, mm. you know, it allows for like freedom, yeah. right? Like you still have all the, the the planning and the training and the learning and the growing and the failure and the, all that stuff. But, you know, it's not all done on a, if it's not this way, exactly this way, then it, it's not, it, it's worthless if it's here. Yeah. And I guess the comparison is if you wanted to hold love in your hand, how would you do it? Right. Well, this way, hey, man, you can, you can like, you know, you can put a big old mound and stack it up this mm -hmm. way, you know, this way, like you open your hand and you find that there's no room for anything in it, yeah. you know? And so I, I still like, and it's hard because most, not most, a, a lot of people that I come across, you know, have that kind of clenched fist mentality. It's got to be my way, my way, mine. And yeah. if you don't do it my way, then you're wrong. Yeah. And you're, 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 you're just, you're a problem. Right. If you don't do it my way. And it's like, ah, let's just do this. Let's see how yeah. this works for you. And just allow for people to, to kind of live their lives and, to, and just to figure out where they belong in all of this. And the freedom of that mm. is, oh my goodness. It's, it's just a really, my shoulders can come down and I can actually breathe. Really? Oh my goodness. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm an amateur psychologist. Right. But it's no, it, it's just that it's like, I see it. And, and the more we get divided politically and all the social media, I, I get it. I get it. I, yeah. It's like, let's just, let's just, my goodness. That's your next book. Love each other. Open yeah, hand. Love each other. Whether you <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> right? the, the open, open hand. hand versus clenched fist. Yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah. true though. I mean, you're so right. Cause I mean, think about it when you clench, everything gets tight, you hold on to everything. When you're open, you're open. And that's, you know, kind of coming full circle, your, your skating style and what you put out there was just true openness, which is a reflection of personal freedom. Pretty well, cool. And, it, and again, I realized, you know, as, as an amateur that um, it was fun to win. Yeah. You know, it, it felt a lot better than losing, you know, I had a lot to compare that to, but it was also, you know, I realized that it, you, know, you had 10 minutes of euphoria and then it's back to work. Right. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, I did it. All right. Okay. That's enough. Back to work. Yeah. But as a professional, it, it was like, there is no medal over the neck or trophy mm -hmm. presentation that says, now I know that I had a good year. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really about, growing and being generous and, mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to really give an audience something they've never seen before. And in that way, grow with them yeah. and learn from them and, and just be humble and hungry, you know, and, and that's, that's kind of something I see with great champions is they're, they're humble and hungry. Mm. I mean, they know who they are, you know, if you look at like Nathan Chen, right. American skater, um, since Pyong Chang, he's been undefeated. Yeah. And rightfully so. I mean, when he's on his game, you can't touch him. Um, he beat the world's greatest skater, Yuzer Hanyu, back to back Olympic gold medals. He beat him in his home country by like, it was it, like in football, a beatdown is like 14 points, right? Right. When mm -hmm. skating, a beatdown is like seven points. You beat him by 30 points. Wow. <laughs> it was just wow. like amazing. It, yeah, it was, it's like crazy. So when I look at a skater like him and we talk, he's the embodiment of humble and hungry. Hmm. Like he doesn't need to be worshipped. 
Yeah. You know, he doesn't need all of this, like, come, you know, to please tell me how good I, he doesn't need any of that. You know, he's third year student at Yale. My goodness. He's like quadruple threat. And he, <laughs> he, he does things on the ice that nobody ever thought was possible. And he does it in a really natural, mm. humble, approachable way. And it's like, that's the stuff. Yeah. Right? If you can do that and, and you can withstand success, right? And, and withstanding success is almost equal to withstanding failure. You've got to do it with the same dignity and the same, you know, it's almost the same temperament. Right. Like I failed. Okay. I failed. I won. Okay. I won. Yeah. But I, I want to continue on that path. It's pretty addictive. Yeah. No, I would say it's like, you know, you don't get too high. You don't get too low. You ride that middle and, you know, you celebrate the victories, like you said, but you, but you learn from those losses. So it's, it's, it's powerful stuff. Well, I I really, uh, I enjoyed speaking with you. I always love speaking to, (laughs) to, to athletes. I always say once an athlete, always an athlete, but, um, but just learning what makes the athlete is really, uh, what's important to me. And I think that's where, where the great lessons come from. So I, I want to thank you for, you know, for being a part of this, I I say this champions movement that I'm trying to create and build. So, so thank you. Well, and again, it looks different for every single person. Yeah, it really does. And that, you know, again, again, going back to finish first, it's that it's like, it's like, you know, we're not born champions, right? Mm. We, we've just got to figure out what that looks like to us and then, follow it yeah so true so true very cool scott awesome man i hope you guys are as fired up as i am from listening to mr scott hamilton the guy's amazing and he has been through a lot in his life you know from overcoming cancer he was adopted as a young man you know he had to compete on a global stage and he did so with incredible poise and confidence and joy joy I would encourage you to go back and watch some of Scott's routines. One of my favorite is when he does a routine to Aerosmith's Walk This Way, filled with joy, filled with passion, filled with excitement. And like I told him, Scott, you gave us all permission when we watched you to just open up and live free. And you had full expression. You were totally uninhibited. And what what if you could have full expression and be totally uninhibited every day that you went through life? Everything would change. Anxiety, stress, worrying about what this person thinks, what that person thinks. It's all gone. So that's my message for you today. That's Scott's message for you. Live your life. Be open. Be free. And live out your dream. Live out your dream. This is Coach Dana Cavalier. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And like I said, if you did, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and most importantly, give us a share and help somebody else be motivated and inspired today. It's Coach Dana Cavalier, and I'll see you next week with the Becoming a Champion show. See ya. (laughs) 